all you beautiful people. <laughs> I did not mean to be that excited. Hello everyone. I am very excited to be recording this video. Uh, there's just one thing I want to talk about. So tomorrow, um, I'm not sure when you'll be watching this, maybe a couple days ago, um, is my one year anniversary since I have been baptized and I am very, very excited about it. So I wanted to talk about why I was baptized and what that means to me. So if you're interested in hearing about that, then keep on watching. So this time last year, my boyfriend, my sister, and I were all baptized together in our church. Um, and it was a very, very exciting time for me. I have a video um, of our baptism and a little vlog. So if you wanna watch that, then I will link it up here. But um, yeah, I'm so excited to tell you all about it. <laughs> so essentially, my sister, my boyfriend, and I had been going to church for, I think, about seven months at the time. And we, you know, were loving church. We were saved, met God, came to know who he was, and we decided it was time to get baptized. I think I made the decision to get baptized a couple months beforehand, but this is like the next um, time that it was available at our church to get baptized. So I do want to explain uh, one thing. I was baptized as a baby in a national Catholic church. Um, which I think is great, like nothing against um, baptizing children, um, but of course it wasn't my decision to be baptized and of course I didn't really understand. Um, so I don't regret that I was baptized as a baby, um, but as I became a Christian years later and learned what it meant for myself, I wanted to be able to make that be my own decision. If anyone asks like, oh, you're baptized as a baby, why are you baptized again? Like, you only get baptized once. Um, I do think that most times you only get baptized once, but um, with that being your own decision, I think that you should be baptized as an adult where you're able to say, this is what I wanna do. So my church believes, along with many other churches, that baptism is something you should do as an adult or like you're at least old enough to make your own decision. I think they have baptized someone as young as six before, which was like the youngest, youngest at the church, only because that child could preach the entire Bible to you and <laughs> they knew um, that it was their decision. But usually wait till you're a little older and you're able to come to say, I know God, I believe in God, I wanna follow him, I wanna dedicate my life to him. Here it is world, <laughs> I'm a Christian, this is what I wanna do. Um, so that's what we got to do. So I was saved um, my very first day attending church and it was amazing and you can read all about it. I do have a blog post about it. If you haven't read it yet, I think I can link it down below. So essentially on Christmas Eve in 2017, um, my boyfriend and I went to church for the first time together and during the end of the service, the pastor just posed a question like, if you don't have a day time where you haven't come to know Jesus yet and you want to, then just like raise your hand and we'll come pray with you and talk to you all about it and help you do that. So yeah, I did that and it was amazing. And then about seven months later, as we're growing, growing in our faith and being more, um, you know, learning where we, what we want to do in the church, we decided to get baptized together. So the reason that I was baptized personally is I just felt so close to God and I felt my life changing and transforming. I felt freedom I had never felt before. And I wanted to do that like outward expression. Here I am, this is my life decision. And that's why I was baptized. So a lot of people um, don't agree with being baptized as an adult. They think you should be baptized as a baby. Um, which I completely understand. A lot of people I have talked to, um, friends I have of the Catholic faith, um, they say that their time making their own decision is their confirmation. And that may not be true. Um, that's just what I have had a couple of my friends tell me. So for my faith, it was just my public declaration was being baptized. So basically we just got up that morning and we got to go and talk with the pastor beforehand. He just wanted to make sure like this is what you want to do. Um, this is what it means, make sure you understand. Um, and we got a cool t-shirt. <laughs> we all got to wear them and we were baptized together. So for the people who either aren't Christian or don't know what baptism exactly means or they think they know but they're not really sure and they just want some guidance and clarity, um, I just want to explain how my church explained baptism to me. So I have this packet here which my church gave me when I was becoming a member. I also have a video about how I became a member of my church, um, so I'll link that up here, or you wanna make sure you go check that out. Um, but
but basically in this packet it offers a bunch of different stuff the one section is our beliefs and they just explain what the beliefs are the church of which are all you know lined up with the bible and what god has told us um but they lay them out for you so that you have like a clear understanding of what the bible teaches us to believe um especially like before becoming a member of a church or something they want you to know like this is what our faith believes so it outlines two things that i want to read to you uh the first one is water baptism and then the second is holy spirit baptism so water baptism says we believe water baptism is an act of faith that identifies each believer with jesus christ and his redemptive work so again, for me, getting baptized was just my public declaration of this is what I want to do. It's just that act of faith that identifies me as a Christian and someone who believes in Jesus and someone who wants to follow him. First in scripture, it has Acts 2.38. Peter replied, each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. It continues, Scripture commands that all believers repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Each facet of water baptism illustrates the believer's identification with the redemptive work of Christ. So the next part is basically this great visual of how my church has described it to me. So in my church, when you're baptized, you are fully submerged under the water and then you are brought back up and when you're brought back up we just holler and cheer and we are so excited of course and just screaming and so happy for everyone who's coming up and choosing to make that decision so a lot of people ask me well why do you go fully underwater and does it make a difference and why don't you just have someone sprinkle your head with water um like why do we do that so our reason for doing that is fully based on the idea of completely dying to our old life and our old sins and then being risen again with Jesus and with new life and with victory. It reads, being submerged under the water portrays our identification with his death on the cross and his burial. Emerging from the water portrays the believer being raised in the newness of life in the likeness of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So again, the whole reason why we believe that we have to be completely submerged under the water um, and brought back up is that we are dying to our old sins, we're dying to our old life, um, and we are raising again just like Jesus did and living eternally in freedom and in victory. It continues, a disciple of Jesus Christ should not consider water baptism optional. Those who are serious about serving God wholeheartedly will embrace the command to be baptized as well as the other statutes, ordinances, and teachings of Jesus Christ. So I just want to provide a little bit of scripture uh, for why my church says that water baptism shouldn't be optional for a disciple of Christ. So the day of the resurrection is explained through Matthew. We're reading Matthew 28 verses 18 and 19. It reads, Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all the authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So that's basically just why we believe um, that you should be baptized. Baptism is not the same thing as salvation, uh, very different. However, one of the last things that Jesus said before he rose into heaven was to go and baptize everyone in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that's kind of just why we do it, to make our own public declaration. It really is just uh, significant in being that visual representation of just coming out and saying, I am a believer in Christ. So now I wanna read from the book where it talks about Holy Spirit baptism. It says, we believe Jesus promised to baptize us with the Holy Spirit to empower us to be his witness and accomplish the supernatural ministry and mission of the church. So now I just wanna read the part where it talks about Holy Spirit baptism. It says, we believe Jesus promised to baptize us with the Holy Spirit to empower us to be his witnesses and accomplish the supernatural ministry and mission of the church. So providing some scripture, uh, Matthew 3.11 says, I baptize with water those who repent of their sins and turn to God. But someone is coming soon who is greater than I am, so much greater that I am not worthy even to be his slave and carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. So using Acts 1.8, it just explains, the Holy Spirit desires to fill each believer and impart his supernatural gifts for the edification of the body and the work of the ministry in the world. It continues, speaking in tongues is evidence that one has received the gift of the Holy Spirit. We believe that all the gifts of the Spirit, as taught in 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 10, are in operation in the church today. So basically, it just says that um, speaking in tongue is just evidence that you have been baptized by the Holy Spirit and has just received His presence 
So again, the booklet just says that speaking in tongues is just one obvious gift of receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit. Um, but if you don't know what that means, like the gifts of the Holy Spirit, as it talks about the other gifts, um, I do want to read that scripture to you. Um, this is a totally different teaching uh, subject, which my pastor has actually spoke on before. Just in case you're not sure what all the gifts of the Holy Spirit are, then I'm going to read them to you. So 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 10 reads, There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit is the source of them all. There are different kinds of service, but we serve the same Lord. God works in different ways, but it's the same God who does the work in all of us. Uh, verse 7, a spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other. To one person, the Spirit gives the ability to give wise advice. To another, the same Spirit gives a message of special knowledge. The same Spirit gives great faith to another, and to someone else, the one Spirit gives the gift of healing. He gives one person the power to perform miracles, and another the ability to prophecy. He gives someone else the ability to discern whether a message is from the Spirit of God or from another Spirit. Still, another person is given the ability to speak in unknown languages, and that one's the gift of tongue, while another is given the ability to intercept what is being said. And then it goes on to say in verse 11, it is the one and only spirit who distributes all these gifts, and he alone decides which gift each person should have. That is a totally other teaching. You can do Bible studies entirely on what all the gifts of the Holy Spirit are, and I totally recommend that you do so. Um, it's really, really interesting and really educational. But because my church teaches about water baptism and then baptism of the Holy Spirit, um, I just wanted to explain basically what those gifts are and what it means when you are fully baptized in the Holy Spirit. So I think I have pretty much gone over everything um, surrounding my baptism uh, that I wanted to. If you have any more questions, please, please, please um, comment them down below. Send a message to me on Instagram, whatever you have to do. Uh, I would love to answer any of your questions. I did also want to mention that, you know, if you ever struggle um, deciding, like, is this something I should do? Like, what are people going to think about me? Especially if you have anyone in your family or friends who are Catholic or who believe that you should be baptized as a baby or they think it's completely insane and that you shouldn't be baptized at all. Um, I just encourage you to go and do it. Uh, it's something that I chose to do and I'm so happy that I did. <laughs> and I definitely promise that you will never regret being baptized. Um, it's such an amazing declaration of your faith and it's just such an amazing feeling that just really unites you and Jesus and you're just publicly saying like, he's the one that I believe in. So thanks so much for watching this video. Um, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Comment down below if you have any other video suggestions, anything else about my faith. Um, that you want to know or any other just suggestions for videos. Thanks so much and I can't wait to see you next time.